So in the in these two parts, it's a two parter again. Uh, sorry about that. We kind of ran out of time in the first one. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up interactability. So you can see this blue circle here is going to be a dummy interactable item. And uh, as we get close to it, it's asking us whether we want to interact with it. And if we do, we press E and it will open up a little window. We haven't put anything in the window yet because we've not actually gotten the objective. But uh, if you go out of this zone while the window is open, it will close it for you. Uh, and you can also close it by pressing this button and it'll, uh, the button is linked to closing that window. So uh, as I said, it's a two-parter. So in the first part, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to write the, the the code for setting up the zone. So checking whether we are actually meant to be interacting. We're going to be uh, making the tooltip. So that's the little thing that says press E to interact. Um, and we're going to be moving out of the zone and stopping interactability or interactability kind of connections. In part two, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making that uh, pop-up window. A console kind of thing and we're going to be coding the bus in there that's going to close the window um, we're going to have the uh, player be able to open that window when we press E and remember when we press E only uh, if we are able to interact and by the end you should have something that looks like this so yeah, let's uh, get straight into whatever part you're on, so uh, if you're on part 1 or part 2, uh, let's get straight into it. So, uh, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on the interactability uh, kind of system for our game. And, um, yeah, let's just get straight into doing it. I'm going to head back into the scenery. So, by the way, the project is exactly as we left off in the last video. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and go into my hierarchy. I'm going to close out the UIs tab. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to click on Main UI Canvas here, and I'm just going to hide it because I don't want to see it in the editor. Uh, I'm also going to click on um, the Main UI uh, kind of uh, parent object, and I'm going to select this little hand icon, and that just means that I can't uh, interact with it, so I won't accidentally click it and move it around um, by accident. So as you can see, uh, now that I uh, deselect it, it's gone. But it's you know it's not actually gone; it's just hidden. Because if we head over to the game tab, we can still see the timer. So um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna close out dummy objects. I don't know why that is open. We're gonna close cameras and close managers just so we're uh, seeing everything neatly. And in the environment uh, parent, I'm gonna create an empty game object. And I'm going to call this one um, interactable, interactable items, uh, just like that. And in interactable items, I'm going to create a new game object. And I'm just going to call this dummy interactable. Now remember, we're still just prototyping, so all the stuff we have doesn't actually need to be the legit stuff that we're going to have in the final game. So I'm just going to move this uh, to about here. Um, I think that'll be fine just so we can walk around and you know do something with it. And then I'm going to um, add a component to this. And the component I'm going to add is one we've used quite a lot now. Uh, it's going to be the sprite renderer. So hopefully you understand what the sprite renderer actually does by now, but uh, if you don't, remember you can leave a comment and I'll explain it again. The sprite I'm going to select is, this time I'm actually going to go with knob, just so we can kind of distinguish it from everything else. I'm going to size it up a bit. And I am going to um, change the color just to something prominent like blue. Right, so... 
The next thing I want to do is I need to have a tag on this. Um, and so the, the tag that we're going to have, it's, go it's going to kind of identify this object as something we want to interact with. Because if we say bump into one of these um, dummy objects, we don't want to interact with it. We uh, just want to kind of bump into it or move past it or something like that. But um, on this object, we do want to interact with it. So I'm going to be using two colliders now. And I'm just going to uh, head into pencil to explain this. Um, let me just create a new keyframe. Give me a sec. Yep, just like that. And now what I want to explain here is the two types of collider. So a collider is something we... So let, let's just take 2D as an example. If this is our player, I'm going to make him that color. If that's our player, we can add something called a collider. And let's say we created a box collider. It'll kind of be like this. And if we just leave the box collider on its default settings, what we're, do, what we're saying is that this collider needs to enable some sort of physics attribute onto this uh, and onto our player so if something was to uh, walk into it it won't be able to get past this collider just like how you aren't able to say walk through a person um, so that that's what a d default kind of collider is going to do it's going to make our object actually physical and have a presence in the scene Another thing we can add is something called a trigger collider. And you start it off the same way. It's going to be, you set it up as a normal collider. But what you've got to do is you've got, you've got to change the settings of it to make it a trigger. And so what a trigger collider is going to do, is it's going to let something pass it. It's, uh, going to, it's not going to be, it's going to, not going to create any physical differences. Uh, so this one will still stop it from getting through. But the minute it passes this kind of barrier here, the code is going to know um, that it's in this trigger zone. And so what I want to use this for is say this black object here is, um, say that's our interactable item. I want to have this uh, uh, lighter green collider here be a physical collider so that we can't walk through an interactable item. And then I'm going to have this green one here be the zone. And that's the zone where we can interact with it. Because if the player's say here, I don't want him to be able to interact with this object here. I need him to, um, I need the player to walk around and come close to the object so that he can interact with it. And uh, I'm just going to quickly go into this, uh, once it finishes looping, and show you what I mean. So these triggers and colliders you won't see in the game, but they add the functionality. For example, uh, the one thing I've been taking so far is this interactable item here. If I'm standing like here, uh, at the top of this room, I'm not going to be able to interact with it. But when I get closer, I am. And if I get even closer, then I, I'm not able to walk through this chair, because this has got a default collider on it. However, uh, there is a trigger zone, as you can see, if I head there, I can interact, and there I can't. So the circle, uh, or any shape actually, would be roughly around here. Um, so that's what we're going to go and implement into our game. Um, so, uh, not that, we need to go into Unity. So, the first thing I want to do is add a tag, because um, it's all fine that we have this trigger, but our code needs to know what the trigger is for. Because um, we can have loads of triggers in our game, and our code won't know what is this trigger actually meant to tell us. So, what we're going to do is we're going to tag it. It's kind of like marking this trigger as, you're supposed to do this. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into layers here and click edit layers. And then it'll bring up this kind of window in our inspector called tags and layers. I'm going to open up the drop down called tags and it should say that list is empty. Now I'm just going to add a new tag and I'm going to call this interactable item. And I'm going to be using camel case here just so I know um, exactly what I typed. And that means that the first letter is lowercase. But then from then on when we start a new word, we're just going to make it uppercase and joint onto the, um, the, the same uh, word. And I'm going to click save and then you should see tag 0, um, that's the index of this tag, interactable item. So now what I want to do is I want to go into dummy interactable and right at the top you should see a little uh, drop down here saying tag untagged. 
and I'm gonna click on tag and I'm gonna select the tag that we just made all these other tags here these are default tags um, I, we might use a few of them and actually let me just show you something first if we go into cameras main camera you can see that it's by default already got the tag main camera um, yeah so I'm just gonna head back into dummy interactable and give it the tag interactable item so now we know that this uh, item uh, needs to be interactable so the next thing I want to do is add that um, this light green physical collider so that we can't walk into it um, so what I'm gonna do it's a component so I'm gonna add a component and I'm gonna type in collider now when you do this you should see you have loads of different options first of all since we're working on a 2d game the main collider type we'll be using is the ones that have 2d at the end uh, not these standard box collider, um, capsule collider, what we need is the 2D version of them. Um, and so since this is a circle, I don't think a box collider is going to be the wisest option, so I'm going to scroll down until we find a circle collider 2D. And I'm going to click that. And you should see it also um, kind of uh, puts in that green outlining for the, uh, for the collider, but if this isn't to your liking, if you want it to be different, just click here, edit collider, you should be able to move it. And uh, right back in the second episode where we went over the editor basics, I said that this tab here, uh, past the uh, move, rotate and scale, was for extra items. When you're, uh, click, when you're holding something that has a collider component on it, the extra option is to uh, edit the collider, as so the same as you click here. So if, you, uh, if, it, if it's kind of easier for you to click up here, then you can just click up here and change the collider. Right, so before we move on, I just want to test that that collider is working properly. Um, if you remember, I think we put a collider on our player already, so these two objects should be able to um, physically interact. Now, where do we put this? Okay, and what's that? Okay, so we have faced a small problem. And I think. I know the reason for that. Um, where is that player? Interactable item. Player. Okay. If I head back into 3D, I'm just gonna check that they're all kind of visible to each other. And so there's our game. Right, so uh, here's the first problem. The first problem was that we weren't seeing our uh, our, our kind of uh, our, our player, right? But uh, not our player, our interactable item. We can see it. Um, and the reason for that is, if you can see, the Z value is totally different to the Z value of everything else. And the reason for that is we've parented it to this ENV object, right? And for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, the ENV object has a Z. Of minus 28 and so that's outside the camera's view the camera's just looking at this this scene here because it's a 2d game so what we want to do is we want to go into the ENV object and set that to zero so remember if you have any kind of problems like that uh, the, the first thing you want to check is that everything's on the right Z value the next thing is uh, what's happened here all our dummy objects now are off-center um, and the, the reason for that is by offsetting the ENV object, the dummy object's parent has uh, kind of flipped that over and given itself a positive 28 uh, Z value. So I'm just going to go and set that to zero as well. So now I know there's one more problem that we spotted, uh, and that was that the player would spin, keep spinning. But first, I just want to go in and check that we fixed the problem of not being able to see the uh, object. And there we go, we can now see the object. Now the other problem we had was this, when we bump into it, we start spinning and that's not something we want to do. Our player needs to be standing upright the whole time. And the way to fix that is, I'm going to head into 2D and zoom back in. By the way, to zoom into something, you can just double click uh, the item in the hierarchy or you can click it and then click F to focus. Uh, so for example, if I click player and I zoomed out a bit and then I hit F. Okay, maybe F is in the, Oh no, sorry, F is for Blender. But yeah, for Unity, um, just double click it and you should zoom straight into it. Right, so now 
Uh, if you remember back to, I believe, the third episode where we started, where we, where we worked on the player's movement, we added a component onto the player called the Rigid Body 2D. And the Rigid Body is what gives our player physics. It's what makes our player able to kind of move because we're accessing the physical velocity value on it. But that also means it's subject to all other kinds of physics. So when we first created it, we did take gravity down to zero so he wouldn't be affected by gravity. If he was, as soon as the game starts, they just drop down and infinitely keep on going because there's nothing here to stop him. Uh, another thing that's happening now is when he's bumping into this, he starts spinning around because he's been knocked off balance. And to stop this, what we've got to do is we've got to go into our player object, find the rigid body 2D, and go into constraints. Another constraint, constraints are where we can freeze, um, freeze uh, position and rotation. And what's happening here is he is rotating around the z-axis when he hits, um, when he hits this object. And we know from earlier that the z-axis is where we see kind of 2D spinning because um, this is the plane where we rotate around on a 2D basis. Um, so what I want to do to fix that is go back into Unity and all I'm going to do is in constraints I'm just going to hit freeze rotation. Now let me save this and run it again. Just check it's working. I believe it should be now. So I'm going to walk down and try and bump into it and there we go. He's not spinning around and he's just doing what he should be and not walking through it. Right, so before we move on, one more thing I wanted to do was um, this dummy interactable is looking a bit too big, so I'm going to take it and scale it down. And that should be fine. Right, so now we've got uh, the dummy object. The next thing we want, we've already got this uh, default collider. The next thing we want is the interactable zone. And um, let me just... Uh, I've already shown you, uh, yeah, I don't think it needs a further explanation uh, since we've already discussed it. So I'm going to go in and add a component and I'm going to do the same thing again to start off with. I'm going to need a circle collider 2D. Um, now this is where uh, things get different. First of all, I'm going to um, uh, check this box here saying is trigger. And that'll make it uh, the, the kind of trigger attributes that we discussed here, that we should be able to walk through it but um, it should kind of change something in our code. Um, and the next thing I want to do is I want to expand this trigger zone. So um, let me just screenshot that. And if we just kind of annotate onto it. Yeah, so if, if we look here, the player is somewhere around here. But uh, if he's um, moving, he's going to be moving this way. Uh, or anyway, he's going to approach this object, and when he gets here, that's where he's going to interact with the. Uh, currently, that's where he's going to interact with the trigger, and this is not what we want because the trigger is exactly where the kind of physical collider is. What we want is for the trigger to be somewhere around here, so he doesn't have to uh, physically bump into the object to actually interact with it. He just has to be close enough and kind of in range. So what we need to do is make the trigger be this kind of circle here. So he's got a zone to do it in. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use this op option up here, uh, which we discussed a few minutes ago, the custom editor tool. And you can also go in here and click edit collider. And actually, I think it's going to be safer to just go in here and do that. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, expand this trigger zone. First, I'll move it a bit that way, not that one. Um, so there we go, and uh, this is the <laughs> this is the kind of fiddly bit. I, I think um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it offset a bit so uh, it's easier to uh, grab the handles. And to do that, by the way, uh, there's another option in here, offset, and you have an X and a Y. Um, I'm actually gonna give it an offset of zero. And rather than grab the handles, another thing you can do is just you see this radius tab here kind of increase that and that's a way quicker way to do it I believe. Now if we think about it I think this is a decent size maybe like let's go to 0 0.7 6 0 0.6 I'm gonna leave mine at 0 0.6 but uh, eventually it's up to you uh, how 
at how big you want the uh, zone to be. Right, so that should be all in terms of setting this up. The next thing to do is write the code for it. And the code um, is going to go into the player controller script. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open that straight up. Uh, give it a minute to load. Right. So the first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a few uh, variables. Now, if you think about this, um, as well as being able to interact, what I needed to do is I need to, it to show like a little message here saying something like press E to interact. And um, for that, I'm going to need to store that tooltip as a game object. Uh, so, what I shall need to do is up here, I'm going to go below run speed and I'm going to. Um, create a new comment actually uh, yeah I'm gonna create a new comment saying um, variables related to interactability and now the first thing I want to do is create a game object and this has got to be public so we can set it public game object e tool tip you can name this whatever you like but I think that e tool tip is kind of pretty descriptive and actually, before we go further in the code, I just want to make that tooltip. So, we need to think about this. The tooltip is going to be text, so it needs to be UI. Um, and what we know is that because of our camera follow script, the player is always going to be in the center of the screen. So all we've got to do is have a UI where the tooltip is kind of offset it from the center, and it'll give the effect that the tooltip is following the player around. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the ENV parent, I'm going to um, re-enable uh, interactability on the UIs and uh, make the UI, uh, main UI canvas visible again. And actually, I'm going to hide the main UI canvas for now. What I'm going to do is in UIs, I'm going to create a new canvas just so we can keep these separate. Uh, so we've got a canvas now and I'm going to double click it to focus in on it. And then on the canvas, I'm first going to rename it uh, to tip canvas. And now in the canvas, I'm going to right click and create a new UI object, which is text. Uh, first of all, I'm going to um, uh, change the alignment so it's in the center of its box. I'm going to select best fit. And I'm going to leave the right transform anchor to be in the center. All I'm going to do is I'm kind of just going to offset it. So if I first put in the text I want, so, uh, uh, so say press E to interact. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize this box a bit. Just so it looks like it should. Uh, what, before I move on, I'm going to uh, change the color to white. Let's just have a look at how that looks. Yeah. Actually, I think that's that's pretty good. I think we can leave it on the left. I know on this game I did um, I put it somewhere up here in the right, but now that I think about it, um, this looks pretty good. Then again, you can position this wherever you want, and so to do that you can just grab it and move it wherever you like. But I'm just going to leave it there for now, because it, uh, it looks like it's in a decent place. So I'm going to rename this text object to uh, 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 tool. I don't know if it's actually called a tool tooltip, but I'm just going to call it tooltip for now. Um, tooltip text, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and disable the whole canvas. Now, when we disable something in Unity, that just means it's not going to be in the game. It's going to be loaded, but it's not going to be in the game, so it's not going to be seen. You can't interact with it, it's not going to influence anything in the game. Um, and the reason I'm disabling it here is because I want to enable it through the code when we get into the zone. And when we when we leave the zone, I want to disable it again. So when the game starts, uh, uh, when the game starts, I don't want to, I don't want to see this uh, torture. So I'm just going to go over here, um, where we renamed it, and on the left there should be a checkbox. Uh, I'm just going to click it, and that toggles uh, enable whether it's enabled or disabled. So now that it's disabled, I'm gonna 
go in and um, toggle the uh, uh, interactability on the UI object again, so we won't inter uh, we won't be able to uh, grab it by mistake. And I'm going to focus in on the env object. Now we can go back into our code, um, yes, code, and finish our variables. So one thing I want to do is, as I said, I want to be able to, I want this state um, of interactability to be changeable. And so to do that, I want something like a trigger. So um, whether we're in it or whether we're not in it. And to do that, I'm going to use a boolean. Um, so I want to make this. Uh, let's see. Actually, I think let's make it private. But um, so let's serialize the field just so I can see it um, when we're when we're, when we're testing. Um, so private bool. Let's call it interactability, like that. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Interactability, um, and I'm gonna set this by default equal to false. Now, as I said, I just want to serialize this field. So remember to serialize a field. You're gonna go to the line above it. So if I set it on line 21, I'm going to line 20. I'm gonna put some square brackets, and I'm just gonna type serialize field. Right. Um, I think there should be about one more variable because we need, uh, what do we need? We need, um, we need the actual item that we're going to interact with. Um, let's, let's think. Yes, we do want to, um, you know what? Let's leave this script here for now. And let's create um, a script on the interactable item because what we want to do is from this script we want to uh, we want to be able to access what the uh, what the interactable item is telling us, right? Um, so to do that, sorry, just give me a minute to think. Uh, as I said, uh, we're, we're not we're not being we're not scripted here, so I'm just trying to figure this out as we go along. Uh, see, the thing is, I think what we should do, first of all, is, um, we should, uh, we should, we should get the tooltip working first. So, scrap what I just said, let's get the tooltip working, and then we can focus on what we're actually going to do with it. Right, so, um, to do that, I'm gonna um, have some kind of thing in the update function to constantly check if this, uh, this boolean interactability is true. And if it is true, then I want to uh, display the tooltip, and, and if it also while it's true, I want to check if I'm gonna press E, because if I actually press E, then I want to do something. Um, and I'm gonna leave the pressing E to after we write that second script. So for now, all we're actually gonna do is set up uh, checking whether we actually can interact. So in the update function here, just below where I do horizontal and vertical, I'm gonna uh, make another comment and I'm gonna say checking if we can interact with an object. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write an if statement. So if interactability equals true what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, display that tooltip I think should I display should I display the tooltip um, no no I shouldn't display it I'm gonna display the tooltip actually inside the trigger so for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check if we press E and if we do press E, I'm not going to do anything yet because we don't have the second script. I'm just going to debug it to the log. So if, and now we need to check uh, whether we got that key press. And to do that in Unity, what we need is we need to call input again, like we did before to get uh, horizontal and vertical. And this time, instead of get axes, we're going to say get key. And now this takes in a key code. Um, and for that key code, I'm just going to type key code dot and now you'll see you've got a list of all the sorry you've got a list of all the keys that you can press 
uh, there's loads of keys in here, um, including all the keyboard keys. So I'm just going to type E, and then you should see it trying to autocomplete it. Uh, so key code dot E, and then I'm going to open up the curly braces so we can do something. And if we do get um, uh, if we do get E uh, as a press while we are able to interact, what I'm going to do is I am going to debug dot log. Um, that interactability interactability is true and we just tried to interact okay and semicolon to finish that off one more thing I want to do is when we press E I don't want to see this tool tip right because uh, it's we don't need to be told that we need to press E once we've actually done it so I'm just going to do e tooltip, which was the name of that variable where we're uh, going to hold the tooltip. And now to disable it, like I said before, um, the, the the what we need to say is dot set active, and then this takes in a boolean. Uh, so if we say true, that means it's going to be enabled, and if we say false, it's going to be disabled. And so since we want to disable it, I'm just going to type false, just like that. Um, and now. What we're going to do is leave the interactability, uh, if we press E, I'm going to leave that there. Now we need to actually handle whether we are um, setting interactability to true or not. And to do that, just like we have fixed update, we have update and we have start, there's another reserved function in Unity. And that is called on trigger enter 2D, and there's also one called on trigger exit 2D. And those are what we're going to be using to detect whether we got whether we're in a trigger zone so to do that um, I'm gonna have private void um, sorry about that private void on trigger um, I don't know why VS code doesn't finish it off but if you're using visual if you're using visual studio it should kind of also complete this here o on trigger enter enter uh, 2D. If you're doing a, two, uh, a 3D game, you don't need to type this 2D, but since we are, we're going to need it. Now, this t needs to take in a parameter, and that's what we actually, what the trigger we actually uh, 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 walked into. And so the type of that is going to be Collider 2D, uh, just like that. And uh, you can name this whatever you like. I'm just going to call this um, Trigger Zone. I think when it auto completes it, it's going to call it something like collide or collision or something like that. Um, it, it doesn't really matter uh, in the end. I'm going to open up the curly braces. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, and now this is where we can do stuff, where uh, where we uh, where we get into the zone. But first of all, remember, I don't want to do it in just any old zone. I only want to do stuff in the zone that's tagged with interactable item. And so to do that. I can access the tag um, attribute on this trigger zone object. So I'm going to say if trigger zone dot tag equals, and now the tag is in a string um, form. So I'm just going to come back into Unity, go into once this buff is through. Uh, just give it a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste the tag uh, directly, just so we don't have any mistakes. Uh, Give it a minute to load. Yeah, so uh, there we go. Uh, going into layers, uh, edit layers, this tag here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna copy this. Right, so <laughs> I think that there must be a way to copy this. So I'm just gonna go into dummy interactable. And then, okay, it turns out you can't directly copy this. So I'm just going to check what I said interactable item. Um, then I'm just going to type it in here directly. I don't know if there is a way, just put it in the comment section so everyone else can know, but I'm pretty sure there was a way. Uh, it's not too big of a deal though, let's just copy it in. Interactable item. Interactable item. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, right, so back to writing. If the trigger zones tag is interactable item, then we want to do stuff. And what we want to do is we want to say, um, we, well, first of all, 
yeah, for what we want to do is we want to set interactability to true. Um, and that's going to make us able to do all of this stuff in here. Now, what I want to do is I want to um, make I want to let us be able to see that tooltip. So etooltip dot set active, just like we did before, but this time instead of saying false, we're going to say true. And that should be it for now. When we write that second script about interactability, what we actually wanted to do, what we're going to have is we're going to access another thing on um, this trigger zone, and that's going to be the script that we wrote. And in that script, we're going to set it equal to a variable, um, and so that in that variable we can uh, we can run that script and the script is going to open up some kind of window for us to interact with and do all that stuff. Right, right. so what we need to do now is write the on trigger exit. So I think after we do this, uh, if we get this working, we're going to split this into two parts because we're heading up onto half an hour now. Um, so what I'm going to do is quickly write private void on trigger see now he's trying to finish it but I don't know why on I don't know why I didn't do it earlier um anyway on trigger exit 2d so it's just so very similar to the old one just this time we're saying exit rather than enter and it's again gonna take in a collider 2d and I'm gonna again name this trigger zone because remember this is local now only to this function so we, we are free to use this again uh, open up the curly braces and in here, I'm going to say if uh, trigger zone dot tag trigger zone dot tag equals, and I'm just going to copy this over interactable item. What we're going to do is we are going to do the opposite of what we've done here. So I'm going to set interactability equal to false and e tooltip e uh, dot set active false. just like that and um, that should be it I think yeah so let's test this out and if it works we're gonna um, finish the part here and uh, continue on in another part just because we're kind of running out of time um, to do this in and also since it's a nice way to, it's a nice kind of uh, place to split the parts now that we've got interactability now we need to do something with that uh, so I'm just gonna come in here, let it load through, and see if uh, it works. Remember, first of all, one thing I always forget to do is we need to give uh, that variable a value. So when we close out the rigid body, we have e tooltip here. What I'm gonna do is in UIs, we've got the tooltip canvas. I'm just go going to go in and drop it in there. Right, and uh, one thing I want to do is I'm just going to uh, keep this player controller script open just so I can see this uh, serialized field that we had here so I can see where, if it's actually working properly. And I'm also going to open up the console and um, so I can see all the debug logs that we created. So, I'm going to run it. And we should see when we come into this trigger zone, we've got press E to interact interactability is true and um, when I press E uh, interactability press E to interact goes away yeah, but interactability is still true and we're getting this debug.log message saying interactability is true um, when we exit the trigger interactability is false uh, and when we enter again we get the tooltip uh, but only until we press it and then we get another message there. Sorry about that. We get another message, and that is that. So that should be, I think, where we um, end the video. We've got the tooltip working when we enter the zone, and we can interact, and we stop interacting when we move out the zone. So yeah, I'm gonna end the part here and finish this off in um, part 2. In part 2 what we're going to do is we're going to write a new script and this is going to be a very small script just to kind of um, hold what we want an item to do because every different interactable item is going to have something different that we want it to do and rather than write that repeatedly in the code we're going to have a script that just has some kind of associated body 
uh, uh, which can be a console window uh, like that. Um, and by console window, I'm, I'm referring to in a game, a console, so like a UI. Um, and it just needs to set that active. So let's finish the part here, and I will see you in part two.